So to recap to what we have done so far, we've used the we've, we we went and developed the Reynolds transport theorem, which relates the change in the extensive property of a system denoted by capital B over time to the change of the uh, intensive um, property corresponding to that extensive property, which is denoted by little b, in a control volume plus the rate at which that property flows across the control surface, which is given by this expression here, which is the density times the intensive um, uh, variable times the velocity dotted with n hat <coughs> integrated over the control surface, where the v dotted with n gives us the amount of, of, uh, of flow, the, the velocity over that's perpendicular to the control surface, that is the velocity component that is actually leaving the control surface. Now we briefly talked about um, conservation of mass, and we're going to develop that a little bit more formally now. If we set B, capital B, equal to mass, then we know that lowercase b is equal to 1, and we can rewrite the Reynolds transport theorem for mass as dm dt in the system is equal to d dt over the control volume of rho dv plus the integral over the control surface of the density times the velocity dotted with the normal vector integrated over the, that area. Now for a control uh, system, by definition, we're following a certain set of particles, and therefore the total mass in the control system is going to be equal to the, the change in mass over the, uh, of the total system over time is going to be equal to zero, and we call that the conservation of mass. Now let's look at the, the um, second part of this equation. That is, let's look at the part of the equation uh, where we're looking at the integral over the control surface. And if you remember, in the past we've talked about um, if we have a uniform, uniform flow with a uniform density, um, a uniform velocity, that we can write the mass flow over an area is equal to the density times that area times the velocity of the fluid crossing that area. Now in a more general case when uh, the density is not constant or the velocity v is not constant then this is, is generalized to the mass flow over a boundary is just equal to the integral over that boundary of rho v dotted with n hat dA. If it turns out that the um, that the density is constant across that cross section, then we can uh, we can take the density outside and we can say we can define what we know what we call the average velocity, which is just going to be equal to this integral over a of rho v dotted with n hat dA over the density times the area. If the velocity is constant across this area as well for, for uniform velocity, then uh, of course, the, the V just comes um, outside the integral once again, and we see that, of course, the average velocity is just equal to the uniform velocity V. Let's look at an example. And in this one, we will look at the effects of, or what, how we deal with compressible flow as well. Let's say that we have a pipe. And we have some flow profile going into this pipe and some flow profile going out of this pipe. I've drawn them as parabolas. They don't have to be parabolas because we're just going to talk about the bulk mass flow in this case. 
And uh, we're told that at section one, uh, the pressure is 100 psi absolute, and the temperature is 540 Rankine. Nice of them to convert to Rankine for us. And at the uh, that's a, supposed to be a two at the outlet for the down somewhere downstream in this pipe. The pressure has uh, decreased substantially to one point to 18.4 psi absolute. The temperature has gone up slightly. No, has gone down. Sorry, to 453 degrees Rankine, and the average velocity is a thousand feet per second. And our job is to find the average velocity at the upstream portion of this um, particular section of pipe. So the first thing that we do is what we always do, which is we define ourselves a control volume, which I will draw in red here. And it will be the fluid inside the pipe, just inside the pipe, with the inlet being up here where at uh, section one and the outlet being down here at section two. And then we can write the conservation of mass, which we had above, which I'll just rewrite now, uh, which is the time rate of change over the control volume of the density within the control volume plus the integral over the control surfaces of rho times v dotted with n hat dA equals zero. I neglected to mention, but the, the flow, though compressible, obviously this is compressible because the pressure is much less um, downstream, um, and we're dealing with air in this case. Though the flow is compressible, it's still steady, and so the first term goes away to zero. So then the next thing we do is we expand um, this generic represent. whoops, this generic representation of the control surface into what we know, uh, what for, we have for control surfaces. And in this case, we have um, at the inlet, we have the integral over section one <clears throat> of the density at section one times the velocity at one dotted with n hat integrated over the area plus the same for section two, and all of that's equal to zero. Now on the left-hand side, uh, actually for both cases we're considering the density to be constant across the um, uh, across the the area. So on the left hand side, we realize that this integral here is going to be basically rho one v one, where that's the average velocity times a one. Except that we know that the velocity is um, that the flow is coming in, so the velocity dotted with the outward porting normal is going to end up giving us a negative sign. And similarly for the second integral, we see that we're going to end up with rho 2 times the average velocity at 2 times the area at 2. And this is going to be positive because the velocity is, is flowing outward. It's in the same direction as the outward pointing normal. And all of this is going to be equal to 0. But a1 and A2 are the same. The, the, the pipe has the same cross-sectional area um, at both sections. And so we can rewrite um, the average velocity at 1 is equal to, well, we take that to the other side and divide by rho, and we see that it's just equal to the average velocity at 2 times the ratio of rho 2 over rho 1. We know that from the ideal gas law that rho is equal to 
P over RT. And so this becomes the average velocity at section 2 times um, P2 over RT2 divided by P1 over RT1. Canceling out the R's, we just end up with V2 bar um, times T1 over T2 times P2 over P1, where I've taken the temperature 1 here up to the top. And then we can plug in some numbers. Let me scroll. We plug in some numbers, and V2, we were told, was 1,000 feet per second. T1 was equal to 540 Rankin, and T2 was equal to, what was it, 453 Rankin, and P2 was equal to 18.4 PSIA. We're using the um, ideal gas law, so it's very important we use absolute pressures, of course, and P1 was 100 PSIA. And for those of you who can't do the math in your head, you plug it into your calculator, da, 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 and you come out with 219 feet per second. So this is the average flow velocity at the inlet.